<clears throat> Daniel finishing this amazing book, mostly prophecies we've seen, but also his life experiences with the lion's den, uh, with Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar, his, his three friends, um, <clears throat> being cast in the fire furnace. But he finished with this prophecy being given, and it finishes in, in our chapter tonight, beginning where we finished last week in verse 5. It says, Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made wide and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days." Blessed is he that waiteth, and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thou thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest, and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. So the wise shall understand. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Lord, we are grateful to be here this evening to open your precious word. And Lord, how privileged we are to have your word to be able to assemble in your name. And now tonight, may we open our hearts to hear from your powerful and precious word and, and learn from it and grow from it and honor you, Lord, by allowing that to happen in our hearts. Guide us in your truth. Bless our time in your word. We give it to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a beautiful ending to the book. A reminder about the tribulation period, but also a reminder that those who trust Jesus Christ, we win. That's a good ending, isn't it? Because it is the ending. So, as it says there in verse 6, the question was, what will be the end of the wonders? The wonders that we've been reading about. The wonders of the Antichrist working miracles, deceiving the world into worshiping the image of the beast, into taking the mark of the beast, worshiping the Antichrist. What, when will all this end, he said. And he laid it out for us that basically from the time that, that he steps into the temple as God, which is the halfway point from that time to the end, is three and a half years. And he even gave us the number of days. But he said there in verse 7, a time, a times, and a half. That's three and a half years from the middle until the end of the tribulation period. We saw that in chapter 7. Go back there if you would. Chapter 7, verse 25. Notice he said here in Daniel 7, 25, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and a times and the dividing of time. So there it is again, talking about the Antichrist, He'll turn his back on Israel halfway through. We, we go to Revelation 11 and we'll, we'll see how this tie, all ties together. Revelation and Daniel are like hand and glove. Daniel would be the revelation of the Old Testament and the two books fit together perfectly. But notice Revelation 11 verse 2. It says, But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. That's three and a half years. Over in chapter 12 of Revelation, verse 14, And to the woman, and if you study Revelation 12, the woman is Israel, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. 
God makes this so clear, doesn't He? And then go to chapter 13, verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So, you know, in, in Matthew 24, when Jesus is describing the tribulation period, and then he refers to the great tribulation. So the tribulation period is actually broken up into two halves. There's the beginning half, and then the second half is the worst half. That's the great tribulation, because that is when... The Antichrist takes total power, turns his back on Israel, defiles God's temple, be begins to speak blasphemies against our Heavenly Father, and that time lasts for 42 months, three and a half years, however you want to look at it. During this time, let us not forget that during the tribulation period, multitudes get saved. Hallelujah for that. Don't forget that if you read Revelation chapter 12, that 144,000 uh, Jewish virgin men are called of God to be special preachers of the gospel, and they go around the whole world, and multitudes trust Jesus Christ because of their preaching. And many of those who do trust Christ will, will die for their faith. They'll be executed because they have... Rejected the beast. So he says there in verse 10, many shall be purified. What does he mean by that? He's talking about trials. Does God use trials to purify us? Yes, he does. Most of us know Job 23.10. We sing it. When he hath tried me, what? I'll come forth as gold. That's the purification process. Fire makes gold more pure, doesn't it? And fire in our lives makes us more pure. It has a purifying effect in our lives. That's what he means when he says, many shall be purified. Go to 1 Peter 4, if you would. And God makes this very clear that from the day we're saved until the day we leave this earth, he's going to use the fire to try us, but to purify us and make us more like our Savior. 1 Peter 4, 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Beloved, you're going to have fiery trials, in other words. But what's their purpose? They're to try us, which is another way of saying purify us. God will use them in our lives, and He will especially use them in the lives of the tribulation saints again, many of whom will lose their life. So back to our passage, verse 10. What a, what a statement. The wicked shall do wickedly. <laughs> I love that statement. Should we be surprised when the world acts like the world? Should we be surprised when they follow the devil? No. This is what they do. Remember, the devil is their father. The wicked do wickedness. We're not supposed to go, oh, the wicked, they're acting wicked. We're supposed to go, yeah, that's what the wicked do. And that's what God says, the wicked shall do wickedly. And they shall not understand. They don't understand the simplicity of the gospel. They don't understand that we have a creator that's written down in his word, his perfect will for his creation, which is to trust the sacrificial death of his son. And uh, even during the tribulation period, if you go to Revelation 16, this, this comes out, this wickedness in our hearts. And it, it should just make us that much more thankful that we're saved, that we were rescued. Notice in Revelation 16, look at verse 9. This is one of the plagues that God sends down to, to pour out His wrath upon the earth. It says, And men were scorched with great heat. Now, you would think that that would cause men to what? To repent. Say, wow, if God has this kind of power, I need to get right with Him. But look what they do instead. And they blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not. The wicked shall do wickedly. And all of these trials are not what's going to convince them 
all these plagues and horrible things that will happen. That's not what's going to convince them to turn to God. It's only going to be the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, just like today. But instead of repenting, look at verse 11, same chapter says, And they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pangs and their sores and repented not. God just keeps pouring it out and man just blasphemes and doesn't repent. But the contrast is that the wise shall understand. The wise shall understand. Let's look at that in Revelation 7. We all know where true wisdom comes from. It comes from the Word of God. So the wise, those who have chosen to believe that this is the authority, those who have chosen to believe that, yes, our Creator is real and He did write down His will for man, those who go to this book and find the answers, they, they will understand. Look at chapter 7, verse 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. No difference. We get saved through the blood of the Lamb. They get saved through the blood of the Lamb during the tribulation period. And these are the wise that he's talking about. These are the ones who understand when they hear the gospel that Jesus Christ is still the Lamb of God. He's still the answer. And they will repent and trust Him and get their robes washed white. Hallelujah for that. Jesus, if you go to Matthew 24, when He was talking about the tribulation, when He was talking about the end times, look what He says in verse uh, 15 of Matthew chapter 24. Here He is laying it all out for us, what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. Here in Matthew 24 and down to verse 15, he says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. So he says, When you see what Daniel prophesied of 600 years prior to Jesus saying this, when you see it 2,000 years or more in the future, <laughs> that that the Antichrist will actually step into the temple in Jerusalem, claim to be God, and essentially desecrate God's temple. When you see that happen, what's he say? Stand in the holy place, parentheses, whoso readeth, let him understand. Whoso readeth what? This. That God laid it all out. So he's given people in the tribulation an a owner's manual, if you will, of what to do. And if you haven't taken the mark by then, then what's he say? Read the Word of God, believe the Gospel, and get saved through the blood of the Lamb, just like we do. But God says the wise, those are the ones who turn to the Lamb for their salvation, they will understand. They will say, aha, it's in here. They'll understand what's going on. They'll 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 be able to say what the next plague is because it's all written down. They will have a complete understanding of what's going to happen when they find themselves in the middle of this horrible time called the tribulation period. But he says, he finishes here in Daniel 12 by saying in verse 13, Go thy way till the end be. Daniel, you are going to rest. In other words, it won't be long. By the time Daniel wrote chapter 12, he's in his late 80s. Now, we don't know when he died because the Bible doesn't tell us, but he probably didn't live much further. And he said, Daniel, you're about, to, you're about to come to the place of rest, which is, of course, heaven, and you will get to see this happen. You will get to see the end come. Well, it still hasn't come. But... To me, it's fascinating, this rest that he talks about. God, and I, God promises you and I this same rest in Hebrews. Uh, chapter, we'll turn there, Hebrews 4, 3. He calls it a rest. And this, a lot of Christians don't get this. They think, oh, you know, I'm here to rest. No, you're here to work. This is the time. This time on earth is the time to work. Work for the night is coming. 
right? We sing that. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while as day the night cometh when no man can work. He's referring to the tribulation period when it's not like the church age. Um, the time, to, what to do now is to work because pretty soon it will be a time of rest. And he talks about that here in Hebrews 4, um, verse 2, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, talking about the Jews, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I've sworn of my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Heaven will be a place where we don't have to strive with the devil, strive with the world, strive with the flesh. Won't that be wonderful? The place of rest. But thinking about Daniel, that God actually sent these angels specifically to talk to Daniel to give us these prophecies. And he said, now, Daniel, I want you to seal some of it up until the end. If you go to Ezekiel 14, 14, I want to show you a very interesting truth here. Now, this, remember, this is God speaking, Ezekiel 14, 14. And God here is talking about man finding God, man finding salvation through God. And he's talking about being delivered. But look what he says, Ezekiel 14, 14. Though these three men, God actually names three men. He says, Noah, Daniel, and Job. Though they were in it, they should deliver but their own souls. In other words, those men were amazing men, so amazing that God pointed them out. Noah, Daniel, and Job. God himself says, though these three men would be in it, they can't help you. That each of us is going to stand on our own decision, whether or not we accepted or whether or not we rejected God's <coughs> perfect son and his sacrifice. But he says, Daniel, the end is coming, but I'm not going to tell you when. Until then, you're going to rest, and, and I will let you see it someday. But to, to me, the blessing of this whole passage is this, these whys. In the midst of plague after plague after plague, I mean, you read it sometime, chapter 6 through chapter 18 of Revelation. you got creatures coming out of hell. you got giant scorpion creatures stinging people. It's, it's horrible. you got hailstones this big. It's, it's a terrible time. In the midst of all that, you're going to have multitudes get saved through the blood of the Lamb of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's because God loves us. <laughs> and in the midst of Him pouring out His wrath upon Israel, He's sending 144,000 Israelites into all the world to preach the gospel of the Lamb of God. And many will say, I need Jesus, and they'll be saved. And the majority of them, it looks like, from what we read in Revelation, will at one point or another die, be martyred for their faith. Aren't you thankful you weren't born in the tribulation period? Of course, it feels like it sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> but God is good. And be thankful that... There was that time in your life when someone shared the gospel with you and the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart and you said, I need this. Amen? And you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and now you understand. God's laid it all out. So the wise shall understand. Thank you, Lord, for your presence.